Hello, hello there, everybody. It's been a fucking while. At least it feels like it on our end. Hello there, everyone. This is Movies Are Real for the month of August and September because we do these in twos now. <laughs> because, uh, you know... There's there, no movies. There are no movies. Movies are hanging in there, baby. <laughs> movies are no longer real. <laughs> uh, this is George Cruz. I'm here with Ryan Lance. That's my name. Uh, Carrie Lyles. Woo! Um, yes, the movies, in the time that, in the, in the time that we last recorded, movies came back, and then they disappeared again. <laughs> At least for us in Nebraska. At least I know, for that, us I know there's in... places in the world where movies are real again. They have been embraced, but not here. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, we got some stuff that we saw in a theater. Uh, we got some stuff that is, like, came up in streaming, and, uh, and then more streaming stuff, and then just stuff we watched. Randomly. Yeah. Theaters were open for a good two weeks. <laughs> Had to be a weeks? month? Two or three weeks, yeah. yeah it wasn't a full month. Really? Uh, it definitely was not. Oh, interesting. Because I was about, I was like one, I was like one day away from being, actually the day they closed again here, I was like, you know what? <laughs> Nothing short again. I'll go see Tenet again. Looked at my phone. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, oh, well. Yeah, yeah, but anyways, yeah. Carrie, the first movie... Yeah, before you, we get to the told, movie that was supposed to save us... <laughs> you told us on this podcast that, like, you don't give a crap. You, <laughs> the first movie you are seeing with theaters open was going to be a Russell Crowe's... Russell Crowe's The hit, the Unhinged... <laughs> unhinged starring Russell Crowe, and you, you did it. I did it. I fulfilled I my it short-term like, goal. <laughs> I think that was, like, the day they opened. You were like, I'm there, I'm, I, in. I'm here. <laughs> Let me in. I'm on Hinge. I think on Hinge, I want Hinge came before a tenant, even, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the week before. That That's what saved <laughs> cinema. And You're look at cinema. Welcome. And. Yeah, okay. Carrie, so tell I... us about the movie that brought you back in. <laughs> it was hilarious. So, for those who don't know, uh, Unhinge had stars Russell Crowe. Uh, this, uh, woman and her child are, like, driving in, like, traffic or whatever, and he, like, she, like, what does she do, like, cuts she's, her off? It cuts him off? She's running late. She's already had a bad morning, okay. and, uh, she's do trying to... Her before her, she had her morning she coffee. She hasn't had her coffee, and, uh, her best client, I think she's a hairstylist or something, her best client just canceled and fired her, and now her son's gonna be late for school, and she's trying to turn onto this road... And it's a red light, and then the light turns green, and she's behind this truck, and he's not going. The light's green, but he's not going. So she honks at him, and she does one of those crazy person honks where she just lays on the horn for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't move, and then she just angrily goes around him. And then he pulls up next to her at a, the next red light, and he's like, uh, you ever heard of a courtesy tap, blah, blah, blah. And they have this whole exchange, and she's like, I've had a bad day. And he's like, well, I'm sorry, so have I. Meanwhile, this morning, Russell Crowe had just, uh, like, burnt down the house of his ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, Do not talk to me about that. So, so they encounter each other, and uh, Russell Crowe's like, all right, well, I'm genuinely sorry, and if you could just apologize to me, we could move on. And she's like, no, and then drives away, and then he spends the rest of the movie attempting to murder her and her entire family and ruin her life. You see, where this movie loses me... <laughs> Is I feel like if Russell Crowe burnt down the house of his ex-wife, he'd be feeling pretty good. I'd be. I'd be Maybe. like, yeah. I'm like, he was just I'm on edge, good. Ryan. <laughs> it's like it's like that's that you know that's just like a one thing off your checklist. It's done. You did it. It's so feeling good. It's Why so... commit your whole day to doing that? But you know that's, because he's a little crazy. So it's right? a ridiculous. So, little so it's a ridiculous concept, and it oh, sounds yeah. like uh, it delivers on it's, that. It's so funny, and it's one hundred percent like <laughs> just extremely like aware of what it is. Yeah, and it's just everyone's overreacting. No one is correct in this situation. <laughs> it's just amazing, and as someone who genuinely loves when people get hit by cars in films and it's supposed to be suspenseful and or shocking this film delivers mm, interesting it's, well, so, it's so funny 
Uh, me and me and Greg were the only. Well, well, there was two other people in the theater behind us, and me and Greg were just dying the entire film, laughing and losing our shit, and being generally uproarious and disruptive. And it was awesome. Mm. <laughs> Those people, like they went like finally back to theaters, uh, such a good time, good enjoy yourself. <laughs> Watch a, watch a spooky thriller, and then, like, there's these two idiots are in front of them just laughing their way through a serious <laughs> drama about a man with mental issues. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so fucking funny. <laughs> Highly recommend. I will be buying this on Blu-ray and probably <laughs> bringing it over here to force you guys I to I will watch. be buying the steelbook. I'm oh, that committed. <laughs> It's great. It's a fun movie. And uh, some people don't like it because they said it was mean-spirited, and I'm like, duh. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. It's a, I, I just loved all the... Because I remember you sent us a tweet in our group message about how it was some article saying how Unhinged was going to be one of the first movies back in theaters, and all the replies were like, I don't think I need a movie about an angry white guy right now. <laughs> and I was just like, I, uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> but, but it was very funny. Right. So I for one really would <laughs> Me personally, I can't speak for anyone else, but Gary Lyles would enjoy a movie about an angry sad sack just taking it out on the world because he's having a bad day. So speaking the, of an angry sad sack. Yeah. So the movie that was supposed to say uh, yeah, angry the angry sad sack in question being Christopher No Bolin. <laughs> uh Tenet is out in the world. And now, well, not anymore. But uh, came out in certain parts of the world. It might still be the only movie showing it. In, in certain parts of the world, yeah, maybe. Um, actually, I don't. Need, there's a fucking cheap ass fucking dollar theater uh, where the old Hooters used to be here That's true. by the half price books. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that yes. place is probably still playing Tenant. That's probably. True. I didn't even think about that yeah. place. <laughs> the last time I drove past there, I know they're showing Bill and Ted and still Sonic the Hedgehog and Fantasy Island. Oh, I think they've been yeah. showing the same movies since February, but you know what? I'd go see Fantasy Island. <laughs> uh, you did? Uh, no, I watched it. I mean, I watched it at home. I would go see it. Oh, the okay. <laughs> Anyways, Tenant. Tenant. It's the same thing forwards as it is backwards. <gasps> uh, spoilers. Um. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, it's a movie about time. It's Christopher Nolan. I think this is, uh, I don't know. It's like it's like an action movie. I don't know. It's like yeah. it's like What If Inception, but again. <laughs> what If Inception, but we explained the thing a lot more. And they did that a lot in Inception. Mm-hmm. So that's something. And they just told you, don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's my favorite part. Do not think about it. Now, it's actually a lot more fun we if you don't think about it. We live in a Twilight world. Oh, yeah. We live in a Twilight <laughs> world. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's again of time fucking. It's, it's time terrorists. They have yes. guns that go back in time. Sometimes they can go back in time, but look inverted. Right. And there so are like, points what's... in the points in the world where these like fucking turntable fucking weird ass bank things. I don't know how you describe like fucking back in the day. I don't know if they still have these back in the day when I was a child, the Taco Bell, for some reason there was a little slot. Where they would put the Taco Bell in the drive-through, like they, like a lockbox, like it was a fucking bank. This seems like pre-COVID <laughs> measures. To make yeah, sure it's safe yeah, for you. yeah. And then you would like they would like put it in and they would take it out. And for some reason, that's what this reminded me of. <laughs> Just like this weird mechanism where you would go through it and you would go like a reverse, like time is in like reverse. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, where, where everything everything's now going backwards by. The people, if you go in there, you're still kind of perceiving things normally. Yes. But everything around you is weird, and you have to wear the little thing on your breathing because you're everything's like uh, yeah, everything's like yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and so if something would like to lit on fire, it would get very cold or whatever the yeah, fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's it is definitely fun when you don't think about it. It's very as soon, yes. as, soon as like as soon as like people. The main characters, the protagonist, some <laughs> the might protagonist, say. The protagonist, some may say. As yeah. soon as like they're starting to go backwards, you kind of like <laughs> understand a lot of the buildup that it's been doing before, and like what they're going to do yep. with it. And you're like, this is going to be really fun, and it happens, and like, okay, that is really fun, and that's just kind of what the movie is, at least to me. It's just pretty fun. Yeah, I don't. Think, I think it's it's the Christopher Nolan. He's not breaking any new ground, even for him. No. This is like, which is weird because like a movie about you know time travel, you know, usually it's like, wow, this is crazy. But like for Christopher Nolan, it's like, oh, 
Again? That's his thing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay. R- relax. So David Washington, Robert Paddington, Elizabeth Debicki, Kenneth Branagh. I didn't realize it was Kenneth Branagh until my yeah. second time watching oh, it. What? How do you not just recognize Kenneth Branagh um, on sight? He's one of the best actors of all time, George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Washington has been given this mis- mission to fucking uh, go, he fucking says Tenet and be like, ah, <laughs> fucking a war that hasn't so- happened yet. Uh, and so he's all like, you gotta go stop this, you gotta go find where these guns came from. And then Robert Pattinson comes like, hey, what's up, man? I've never met you in my entire fucking life. This is crazy. What's up? Anyways, you like this and this, right? We're gonna go do that? All right, cool. Sounds good. And they do a, a fucking Christopher Nolan-ass fucking bungee jump-ass fucking oh, nonsense. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, Elizabeth Debicki is married to Kenneth Branagh, who's not the nicest guy in this movie. No. She doesn't marry a lot of nice guys in no. movies, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and she husband. has son who she loves. Yeah. Yes, a pair. I am, I am woman, I love son. I love <laughs> son so much. One of much. my favorite... There was a lot of good bits in this movie. One of my favorite bits that we did is when she's like at the school and you're, and you're like, Brian, that she was standing no- with she was standing with her like eight year old son outside of the elementary school, and, and I was like, yeah, that guy's actually six feet tall. Yeah, that's, that's just a normal sized man. man. <laughs> Elizabeth Debicki's just that tall. She is. My other favorite bit. And like I think about this bit way more than I should is when Robert Pat is holding a man to gunpoint and he's he's eating food. He's like, "Don't let it get cold." I don't know why. That's really funny. I love it a lot. It's a good bit. I can't think of that moment. It's, it's like it's after it's they after do the they bungee do the jump, reverse bungee jump, and oh. uh, though David Washington is talking. John David. Oh, that, okay. Yes, to the yes, lady, I remember. And then yeah. Christopher yes, Rose. it cuts. But, but it Jesus, cuts to Robert him. Pattinson. It cuts to him at the security room, and he's like, "Don't let it get cold." And like, it cut pans to the security yeah, guy easy. who's like eating spaghetti. Yes, or spaghetti. Something. <laughs> um. Oh my god! I gotta I, be. God, I, gotta I be, wish that were I gotta me. Be honest, guys. I don't remember like ninety percent of this movie. I mean, there's... I think it left my brain. I, mean, I saw it the second like... time. I got a lot more of it. I still have a lot of questions about the MacGuffin thing because I don't understand. Yeah, that's... but anyways, we don't have to go you through. You and that I have here. talked about the MacGuffin multiple times. Yeah, it doesn't make like, sense. I, yeah, I definitely want to watch it again just because like it's fun and it's on my it's list of twenty twenty movies. It's definitely higher than it should be. But like it's, it's what higher fun. than fucking Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, Ella, look, I'm at this point. I really want to put Sonic the Hedgehog at like the lowest, just out of spite. That's but, spite. but one movie that came out this month, like that's the lowest. I like we'll it. Get to it's that. fine. Uh, it's funny. I don't think I. What have I seen? Have I seen some? Has George seen a movie with Elizabeth Debicki in it? Have uh, you seen Widows? No. Yeah, that's did what you, you said. Watch Cloverfield Paradox? No. Because oh, I was like, I've never seen this woman in my entire life. I feel like she was in something else. Hold on. I feel like Let if you look... She's you, got a very rich wife look to her. If, yeah, she if, does. If you, <laughs> if you look up, you will definitely see her. She's okay. that tall. Oh, she was she was Jordan Baker in The Great Gatsby, the Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Great, the oh, that checks out. Lady. Okay, oh, yeah, she was sense. in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. She oh, was yeah, the she go- was the gold lady. Gold she's lady. the gold lady. Okay. I forgot she was in The Great Gatsby. Yeah. She was in Valerian as oh, probably course. an alien. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, Tenet is so stupid. It's like a it's like video game quality ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It's like a naughty dog ass action game like it's the, just, the main character's name is the protagonist like the protagonist and then yeah like it makes me think of uh, unhinged russell crowe's character didn't have a name he was just the man <laughs> the man and i think it's i mean watching it in a movie being this for me the first movie i saw in a movie theater at like with some loud ass speakers like i had a good time like yeah, oh yeah same. but it's, it's fun also like it's not like the fucking second coming of a fucking cinema or yeah. the shit i don't know Anyways, it's fine. Robert Pattinson's good in it. I love Robert Pattinson. It's very. Yeah, good. I like him. I like the fucking Travis Scott song. Uh, <laughs> and I also like that Travis yeah. Scott is the song for Tenet. That's really funny to me. Tenet. Bet it. Also, this movie starts off with the most fucking Dark Knight Rises as intro. It was like, man, this is a Christopher Nolan movie, all right? I guess. I'm just. I'm glad he made this instead of like Dunkirk. Sure, totally. Because like Dunkirk is that's just a movie boring. I don't know. I remember anything about. Um, they're in a boat Kenneth at some Branagh point. And they're sh- is also in they're it. They're shooting it. They're they're stuck uh, and they need the civil c- civilian boats. Uh, uh, Killian, Mur- Killian, Killian Murphy, Murphy pushes a kid down some stairs and he dies. Oh yes, <laughs> like, yes, yes. <laughs> that's my favorite part of that 
that movie. You kill <laughs> He's an orphan and he's like, I gotta prove myself to my family. They're gonna read about me in the newspaper. Dog <laughs> push him. <laughs> Pushed him down five stairs and he dies. <laughs> Anyways. That- those, those new mutants over there, what are they up to? <laughs> Uh, they, they are finally out in the bout. Finally. This movie filmed in 2016. Christ. Simpler times. <laughs> yeah, simpler times. I wonder what happened that year. That Anna Taylor Joy is going places. Would that have been the same time as Split? Or would that have been after? Split was the next year. Split was 2016. Right? I don't remember. Yes. Split was either. Tw- no, Split was 2017 or 2018. So was, an- was Split, Split Anna Taylor Joy? What was Anna Taylor Joy? No, which? 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 Which, which was yeah. like. Uh, which was like. <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> um, anyways, Damn. young Anna Taylor Joy. We she got just did that. Maisie Williams here. We got Charlie Heaton and Josh Boone. Josh Boone directed it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Josh Boone, Fault of Our Stars fame. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these mutants. Um, What's up with them? I've never heard of them before. What's that? These guys are like. Uh, they're, they're new. That nah, can't be it. <laughs> um. I don't but, know. But yeah, this movie, this movie, <laughs> I'm getting so much information. This movie <laughs> no. was filmed. About this movie. This movie was filmed years ago before Fox was bought out by Disney. Yes. it was gonna be reshot because for some reason a producer was like, "This is the worst thing." I watched 9/11, and this is the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And like they were gonna reshoot it, but then like the acquisition thing started happening, so they're like, well, "Let's hold off." Because first off, we got to reshoot this Dark Phoenix movie because that's the priority, apparently. And then, like, this kept getting delayed and, like, no one thought it was real. I didn't think it no. was real. I definitely thought and it was real. And then it fake. came out and, like, it's the most okay it's movie the most I've ever seen. seen. It's the most okay scene It's, like, fine. There's nothing offensive about it. Ryan, you said, like, some, like, one guy kept the whole thing well, up. I feel like, like it has I to be feel it. like one guy saw this and, like, their kid hated it. Yeah. Like, for some reason, like, I hated it. I don't like how those new moons were so new. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, new. I like it's just nothing. And, like, I like... It's not Dark Phoenix. No, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I but, remember in the trailers, it played up that it seemed like a horror movie. Was it uh, like that There's, all? like, sp- there's some, some spooky guys it ha- in it. That's oh. the idea. Like, the concept is, like, it's these five like mutant kids um they're teenagers and like in you know the x-men world you start getting your x-men mutant powers like around like teenage about uh, teenage years like a puberty thing yeah so like a really great time when your bodies are also dealing with changes to also you know grow wings <laughs> you know really convenient <laughs> stuff so they're going to this like school for like ki- young kids to, like help them deal with mm-hmm. that stuff and it's like really shitty. Yeah, it's really shitty. And so everyone's like, "Well, clearly there's, there's this is Professor some... Xavier is fucking yeah, shitty." E- yeah, even though like it's clearly it's Ex- obviously <laughs> not Professor X- Xavier who's you know Patrick Stewart the nicest man alive. Yeah. Even though in all the X Men movies, all the problems are caused by him doing something <laughs> badly. It's in reality, it's like a private military fucking thing that takes mutants as weapons and shit. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But um, this this new mutant uh, who's played by <laughs> Blue Hunt. Um, she starts going to this place, and some kind of spooky stuff starts happening. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's Native American. We'll Native say. American. I hope she's actually Native American. I think she actually. I mean, is. she seemed like it. She seemed like it. Um, but I did like how they, you know, had some diversity yeah. stuff in there. That's always cool. And I see. mentioned it's more important because that's what the character is, and mm-hmm. because it appears like that's the actress. But also, they do they vary the the, the the nightmarish stuff is happening because her power is that she can. Take your fucking like worst nightmare or whatever and make it real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like there's a bunch of weird shit that's happening, and it turns out that we find out that that's her power. Mm-hmm. And so fucking. I feel like it's obvious the whole time that th- that she's the one doing it, but no one's like just like commenting on it. Yeah. But, you know whatever. And Anna Taylor Joy, I guess, was like fucking haunted by these really creepy pervert yeah, pedophile I, monster I, people like they, they, smiley they starring had very, fucking, they had very slender man energy yeah it's very weird with smiley starring fucking what's his fucking name shane, shane dawson, dawson. Shane dawson. <laughs> <laughs> toby Journalist, turner what's journalist he extraordinaire <laughs> shane dawson <laughs> um let's see Maisie williams no was but haunted. seriously they looked like smiley guy yeah <laughs> Maisie williams was haunted by a priest and that kind of yes. made sense her her main powers was like she was basically just a werewolf she's just a werewolf oh. yeah that's kind of fun she's like a gay and werewolf. taylor joy's power hell yeah <laughs> and taylor joy's power was like 
cool Viking cool lady. Vi- yeah, and like she could like open do- a door to a dimension and like, get like a metallic yeah. arm and like a power it's really saber cool. ghost sword. Yeah. It's like how do some people are all like I have wings. <laughs> I can open a portal to hell and, and I like, turn into like I, a fucking I god. Yeah. A, I can turn into a frog. <laughs> it's like uh <laughs> Ah, she's got a puppet. Uh, what was the puppet? Oh <laughs> yeah, she had a puppet that like was actually like the being from that other dimension. Yes, that's my problem with the fucking mutants and X Men. Some of them have like just powers, and some of them are like, I'm just Jesus, <laughs> and like it's so weird. Like Scarlet Witch from the comics, she's yes. a mutant, and there's a whole comic book art where she just destroys the entire world because yes. she ha- that's her power. That's weird to me. Um, what was else? Uh, there was also the fire guy. Yes, he turns into. He um, gets and Charlie out. Hunnam was not Charlie. Was it Charlie Hunnam? Not Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Heaton. Charlie Heaton. Yeah, Charlie Hunnam, another guy. Stran- I was like, oh, this movie sounds worse now. Yeah. Uh, Stranger <laughs> Things guy. Um, he's he like he quick, like went fast. He's like Quicksilver. Quick, uh, like but like he like he like 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 ricochet. Like there's not a like yeah, force. Yeah, that's a yeah. A lot of force, but yeah, 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 he went yes, fast. Yes, yes, he couldn't yes. control it. It was like. It was like a ball. Going it's like a ball in motion, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They they all had really interesting powers, and that's what I liked about like the newer X Men movies because they were had to like make more deeper cuts. Um, well, this... That's the other thing about this movie. Like, it's really small concept. Oh, all things yeah. considered, like it's an hour and a half, and like you're introduced to these characters, like man, this shit's going wrong, and then shit goes very wrong, and they're yeah. like, you gotta kill this nightmare lady. Like she's not working out. Yeah. And like again, she's Native American, so she has like this bear spirit thing. She's like, scared I of hope, bears. I hope that's all done well. Yes. I hope. Yeah. Again, it was like this feels a little on the nose, but well, I don't think I'm, you're doing I'm it. I'm gonna best. hope it's all done. I'm well. going to assume <laughs> it's done right. The culture's interested. I'm gonna hope that they're doing it justice because I'm not one to say. I'm not one to say otherwise. Yeah. But it, I appreciate it. Surface level. Anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, she's she like, ah, the bear inside of you, whatever the hell. <laughs> There's I'm, two bears inside of exactly. you. Exactly. Yes. Gay. Yes. The other one's. <laughs> guess what? It's also gay. You're gay. Um. <laughs> And so, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'd probably watch it again. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's... Why the hell was this delayed 18 times? I don't get it. I don't get the it either. wasn't ready. Was it the gayness? Because honestly, it wasn't gay enough. It wasn't actually. No. So, I don't Oh, know. yeah. And then, like, the the guy who wrote the New Mutants comic books had like, problems sucks. with it. Um, they also misspelled his names in the credits. Oh, yeah. And like he went on, it. he oh, went on, no. he went on Twitter, and I was like, I, I love how this movie came out uh, four years late, and they still misspelled my name. <laughs> but like he also had problems with like um, the uh, the fire character. He's uh, Brazilian, and like yes. uh, they cast it. It he wore as like a dark skinned Brazilian person and like the cast of a very light skinned oh, Brazilian person. Okay. You know, I don't know enough about Brazil's, you know, I get it. Yes, yes stuff. Yes, yes. So yeah. maybe other people would say that. That makes sense. That was something he was not a big fan of. Um Interesting. I think there was some other like things that they changed about the way the characters look that he wasn't a big fan of. But yeah, he was not a big fan of it. And like the name thing is like this just is the icing on the cake. That's so funny. Um, but yeah. It's fine. His name is like Mick something, but they called him Mac something in the credits. And it's like which like that's so what the hell, guys? It's a Google search. How do you do that? <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, it's fine. Coming it's to fine. HBO Max. It's pro- probably worth yeah. a watch, honestly. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Carrie would like the ending. I'm not gonna say it because oh. I I'm excited for her to see it and be like, oh. There's two bears. <laughs> Anyways, big, big Carrie energy. <laughs> so Carrie, you saw this in the theater, right? Yes. Uh, you cannot kill David Arquette. Uh, you guys only need to explain this to me because you were talking about it and I was like, I didn't honestly. So I saw this. Thing. So I saw this in the Alamo. I assume that's how you also discovered it because it was in the Alamo. Like what? Like well, Alamo's open. What are they showing? Uh. Greg's brother recommended it to him, and then Greg told me he wanted to watch it, and then I got the email that it was playing, and I was like, oh shit, here's that thing. So I saw, and for some reason, I'd just been off from wrestling in a minute that I just was like, yeah, yeah, yeah David Arquette, I get it. But anyways, so David Arquette, uh... And I had no idea about any of so this So yeah, so David, David Arquette, known very much for his performance in Scream yes. as a cop. Um, and I honestly don't know what else David Arquette was <laughs> oh, in, God. apart from the movie that uh, motivates David Arquette a lot uh, is Ready to Rumble, which is a movie where uh, they like his character gets involved with WCW, which at the time the '90s was the uh, sort of the 
the uh, Pepsi Col Pepsi to uh, WWE's Coca Cola, mm -hmm. so the competing brand of uh, programming. Uh, and one for, to promote the movie, they were all like, "What if David Arquette gets the world title? What if he becomes the world heavyweight champion at this pay per view? What if that be crazy?" <laughs> Uh, and so they go ahead with it, they do it. and, and David, it goes over really well. It goes over Everyone's very really well. Happy about it. David Arquette, world heavyweight champion. Ric Flair, <laughs> Buddy Rogers, all <laughs> David Arquette. Um, and, and, and it's all stupid because it's wrestling. Like, hey, in reality, it's all dumb. But the world heavyweight title is one of the more history wide. Like, yeah. it is like it's been around for a long fucking time. But it's still wrestling. Even I, as someone who enjoys wrestling, the prestigiousness of a title. Is like who cares? Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, after the, after that movie came out, uh, David Arquette was sort of seen as a joke, I guess. Yeah. And then like his career never fully recovered from and that. People moment. people were like assuming that he was disrespecting wrestling. And that so whatever. like both people hated him. Yeah. So like he can't. Yeah, and he and he genuinely loved yeah. wrestling. Mm -hmm. So he genuinely and he didn't want to do it. But <laughs> yeah, it's the nineties. Like, it, it's the nineties. <laughs> it's Eric Bischoff and fucking Hulk Hogan and Ted Turner, and they're like, "Let's put the strap on him." Um, and so that's what happened. And so we find David Arquette. He's in a moment where he's like, really, really down on himself. Man, he's all like, "Man, I'm gonna get in the shape, and I'm gonna prove to the world that I am for real, and I can be a professional wrestler." Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what this movie's about. It's about him sort of going through the fucking. Training, getting in shape, and doing the like different types of wrestling, mm -hmm. and, like backyard wrestling. And by the by that, yes, he goes through the ringers. He's going through the indie scene. He's not getting yeah. signed by a WWE. He's not getting signed and by goes, and hangs out with those luchador wrestlers in who Mexico are wrestling in the street. That yes. was awesome. So it's about him. It's about him taking a lot of bumps and learning his way, um, and sort of a redemption arc for him. Um, so yeah, what do you think, Carrie? Somebody who I knew a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I didn't know any of it besides the small greg gave me like a small rundown of because i knew who david arquette was because of scream and he was in like five minutes at the beginning of bone tomahawk oh and uh so i was like i know he's an actor and i had no idea about the wrestling connection and uh and it was an interesting story to watch unfold and him and i thought it was very compelling especially when they set up how he has all these health problems yep. and then he goes into these fringe scary <laughs> wrestling matches and death matches yeah like squishing light bulbs into his head like it's a fucking yeah, beer can yeah, yeah. and i was losing my mind and i was like this is so scary and greg was like, was like no it's not all of it's not like that and i was like no. <laughs> and somebody who enjoys wrestling i'm i'm not i'm not a big fan of I feel the like death even match. some it's, of it is like that that's pretty it scary was some of the most unnerving yeah, shit i've ever not, seen it's just because it's like and he almost fucking dies. Yes. It's like, Jesus. It's like hit an artery Christ. kind of deal almost. Yeah, because yeah. this guy... Nick, this guy he was writing Nick Gage. Yeah. He it, takes these uh, like light light bulb tubes, like fluorescent, fluorescent, fluorescent light, yep. lights, and he's like smashing them on his back. And, one, and then one of them, he's like smashing it into his head. And then a shard of glass just like goes punches. into the side of his throat. And he's he just, like, almost bleeding. fucking dies. Yeah. It's like, what the shit? And then he gets sad because he's like, ah, oh, I fucked that up. And it's like, it's a whole thing. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, and, uh, it, oh, my God, what's his name? I just had it. Oh, fuck. Jungle Boy's dad. Who is Jungle Boy's dad? Jungle Boy. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> Do you remember the name of the fr the other famous actor who helped him out? Uh, Carrie. The one who, like, took him to the hospital? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember. Ah, oh, fuck. It was, remember. like, best friend. Can you look up who's Jungle Boy's dad? <laughs> who is? Uh, but, yeah, uh... Point being, also a, a moment is that this when that, when that happened, we almost died. Uh, another famous actor friend who's been with him throughout like his whole life took him there. His son, uh, Luke Perry, Luke Perry is uh, his son uh, is also a wrestler, and so Luke Perry passes away. Uh, Jungle Boy is sort of this is like a, the minorest of arc, but it's actually a, a a thing in wrestling that Luke Perry's son is Jungle Boy. He's signed to AEW. And so near the end, they have like a, a like a thing where like, hey, like Luke Perry's a, like he's my dad, and then mm -hmm. he was a very important like person in his life. So there, that's also like a redemption, that like sort very of nice. yeah, um, very moving. Yes, <laughs> catch me crying at a wrestling documentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good. I don't think it's it's uh, it's just fascinating. I don't think you have to like wrestling to find it interesting. No, yeah. 
Um, a lot of people in that who are canceled now. That's what I was watching. I was like, <laughs> that person. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> um, but yeah, also there's some sweet people in there. Good people also. But yeah, that's good. Yep, yep, yep. It was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of handsome boys. Uh, <laughs> the devil yeah. all the time. I don't know anything about all this. All the time. Oh, oh boy. In this economy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I only know this because of the cast, but I don't know what this is. This, this is like, they're like, who do... <laughs> they went who into people, my letterbox. Who people speak in are horny? <laughs> so let's just hire those guys. Um, but yeah, the devil of the time. We got... Bomb Bolland himself, Bill Skarsgård, Riley Keough, Jason Clark, Sebastian Stan, Robat Battenson, uh, Haley Bennett, and uh, Alyssa... Eliza I, Scan. Eliza Scan. So is this like a Southern thing? It looks like yes. a Southern yes. vibe. Yes, it's like Very Georgia, Southern Gothic right? vibes, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay, gotcha. And it's this... Uh, it's like a whole... Like, it's this huge-ass cast, and it's this whole long series of events... That and it's a lot all of separate stories. Connected, yeah, yeah, it's all these separate stories that sort of, as they progress, show how they're woven together, and it's all within this one town that they mm-hmm. talk about. And it's very, I really enjoyed it because it's that kind of thing that I love, just with the huge cast, and they're all doing, they're all doing, they're all acting, they're they're all acting, and they're all beautiful, <laughs> and then. Uh, there's some really dark things in it, and it's like uh, a lot of it has to deal with is dealing with religion and how mm-hmm. people internalize and deal with their own religion and applying it to their life and overcoming grief and tragedy with that or or rebelling against it. And it's mm-hmm. just it's very interesting, and I enjoyed it. And I got the chance to see it in the theater, so that was exciting. Right, it was weird that Netflix put that out in theater. Yeah, but hey. What'd you think, Ryan? I I liked it, not to the extent Carrie did. I thought, you know, all the performances were super cool. I liked how it all came together. It's just, I felt like in terms of like the crate and like the crate, because I I remember like when this was like pitched to me, it's like this is like a dark movie. Like when it came up, people like that movie's so upsetting. That's like (laughs) hell yeah. But then like I don't know. I feel like most of the upsetting stuff. To me, was like more towards the beginning. Yeah, and then like a lot of the Bill Skarsgård stuff. Yeah, yeah, that for that like (laughs) that really effed up thing he did. That's really good. When that happened, I was like, this movie's got this movie's not afraid to go there. I'm gonna say it, but then like there's dark stuff. But like I feel like that was like the peak of it personally. It's less fun dark stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Robert Pattinson stuff was just like that's just not cool. Just scummy and made me feel (laughs) gross. Yeah, but like everything else after that was just like. And also, some of the bad, the, some of the fucked up stuff is just funny. The stuff with Riley <laughs> Keough and Jason Clark. <laughs> so I don't, I don't care who you are. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's the funniest <laughs> shit I've seen in a long time. That's pretty good. <laughs> Not to spoil it, but like, it's just, it's so funny. It's good. I love it a lot. Um, and then yeah, the other thing is like. The movie advertises itself like Tom Holland is like the guy, but like he's not even bored until like an hour into the movie. <laughs> it's like okay, I I guess. But I mean, he does like helm. He does no. He, he brings he, it all together. He definitely does. He he is the thing that braids all the stuff together. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, oh, and then also the Sebastian Stan stuff felt very like. That's like the one plot thread that I was having trouble. Yeah, <laughs> connecting yeah. Connecting to the rest because like. It's not to like the very like okay I get it but it's also like not that interesting how it connects. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even like because like the the Tom Holland slash Bill Skarsgård stuff that's like the A plot you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and then the Riley Keough and Jason Clark stuff that's the B plot. He is not even the C plot. He is like the E plot. He is so <laughs> he feels so disconnected from everything that it's just like all right. I get it. You're the Winter Soldier or whatever. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, this movie is cool. It's fun. It's 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 a fun enough movie. Netflix. Netflix. Baby. And Ro- and shout out to Robert Pattinson's accent cuz it's just so funny. Oh, it's yeah. so ridiculous. It's so good. <laughs> also, have we gotten a check up on him how he's doing? He is he cleared. Beat COVID. He's clear. Yay. Hopefully he he killed he, COVID. Yeah. Well, not not for everyone. Just for him. <laughs> Just for him. <laughs> Just for the no, Hollywood. No, Robert Bigger. Pattinson single handedly ingested <laughs> and killed COVID nineteen. He's like, I'll take this for everyone else. 
I like to imagine when a he hero. got the test result, he was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> hell yeah, I don't have to work out this week. <laughs> he was like, oh, I can just sleep in. Uh... <laughs> What the heck is Relic? Relic. Relic. Uh, I watched this a while ago, and I saw. I get this one confused with the. uh, This isn't the. um, The Dave Franco one, right? No. No. I don't know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a similar feeling movie with Dave Franco that came out. It looks kind of good. I like the cast a lot. It has. um, uh, Man, what's her name? Uh, Allison Brie and uh, Sheila Vlad in it. And it's it's a scary movie he made that came out this month. I didn't see it because it's on. <clears> no, this DOD. came out a while ago. So what is I this? Just Tell me it, about it. I saw it on my letterbox diary and realized I never talked about it. And I really enjoyed it. It's an Australian movie, I believe, mm-hmm. and it's it's got uh, an actress that you guys would know. It's the one lady who was in Neon Demon and also was the stalker in Fifty Shades. That one big oh. lady. Ah. Uh, she her, shows up in a lot of things. She shows up in stuff all yeah. the time. It's her and her mom are get a call that their grandma, well, her grandma, the mom's mom, has gone missing. And so they're at the grandma's house trying to figure out what was wrong or where she is. And uh, they notice some weird things in her house and some stuff that, like, she was, like, writing notes. And so there's some unsettling notes that they found. And I then... I think I've seen this movie, Carrie. Is it called Hereditary? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, but then the grandma ends up showing back up. But she seems affected and different. And it's just a really... I really enjoyed it. It's an interesting film. It's not like a... It, you would benefit to not go in expecting a run-of-the-mill this will answer all of your questions or her movie. It's more of a, more of a film about like loss and uh, grief and <laughs> watching your family grow old. It's very good. And it's just, I really enjoyed it. And I wanted to shout it out. Cause I think you guys might like it. Relic. Mm-hmm. Relic. I, I, I did see the trailer for this. I just can't remember too well. And I was <clears> like, <throat> that looks like something I'd watch. VOD. Not right now. Mm. But yeah, check it out. It's good. Uh, Ryan, we saw Class Action Park. We did saw Class Action Park. How did this happen? Um, (laughs) You were over, and we were like, let's watch Class Action Park, because we're bored. Um, And we did. I think think it's because we finished the Selena Gomez cooking show. Yes. Which which this (laughs) podcast... show. Yeah, you know what? I I told... Shout out to Papa. I told told, uh, my roommate and our friend Zach that we were watching, and he was like, Ew, why? And it's like, listen, <laughs> you say that, but what episode did you're like, you know what, I get it. It might have been last episode where we were also making fun of that and we wound up watching it. Yeah, and well, now yeah, we're all Yeah, because we had fans. her picture on the TV and yeah. she was watching us. And, and then it, we watched every single episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Clash Action Park is a documentary based on Action Park, the uh, notorious New Jersey uh, amusement park of old that was very no fucking holds yeah, barred, go fuck yourself. Like, what if a water slide had a loop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, Carrie. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh god. What if we had a bunch of fucking rocks and shit like down this fucking metal slide that was yeah. going down? Anyways. It's what a, if you just jumped off a cliff into water? Yeah. <laughs> what if? I mean, they do it in Twilight. That's true. <laughs> what if all the lifeguards world. were just teenagers <laughs> and they were all really high and drunk all the time? Sounds cool. <laughs> Does sound like a pretty awesome time. What if there was an interstate in between the park? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good uh, um but yeah it's like it was made the park was made by this you know basically a coked up guy who was like that connects- guys what if like we did this and like that's hilarious <laughs> but that's a funny joke you just made no i'm serious uh, oh yeah and he, then they did it yeah and so this, this i've heard i've heard many stories from people who yeah. live in new jersey about this thing so this is a documentary sort of talking about like so okay. So here's the thing. I think the documentary is fine. I don't like the way they they do like weird animated bits to yeah. show fucking like, oh, this is how it used to be. Uh, I think it's not great. But also, the motherfucker who directed this goddamn fucking movie 
is an interviewee in the movie. Yeah, that's not but he does good. not describe himself at any point that he is the director of the fucking film. What? <laughs> so he is giving you accounts and historical things of the park. But he's already a biased party. So it's like fucking dumb as shit. Anyways, some folks died in it. We hear from uh, a, mo- a family who, uh, who who lost somebody at the park. A lot of people died there. A lot of people died in it. Uh, it was pretty not great. Um, so yeah, it's it's still fascinating though. Even though I think the the the, uh, the inner the problem with it is that the documentary has a lot. It's like gassing itself up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think a lot of documentaries have that problem. But uh, like uh, because like hey, this thing we're talking about is interesting and important. Is it crazy? Whoa! Um, but it's still interesting. Yeah. It's still. Instead of a Wikipedia, we're reading a Wikipedia and going a bunch of articles. Yeah. I think that's fine. It is good to like walk because like I was looking through, I was just looking through the list of like the rides, and like they don't sound bad surface level. It's just that when you're there, and you understand the context of what's going on with that ride. You're like, oh, that's yeah. really bad. The only one that like really like, says it is you see the loop water slide. It's like, real bad. That's not great. And then they even talk in details like how many people lost teeth in it. Oh. It's like, that's actually really not great. <laughs> Yuck. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely interesting. It's not told in the best yeah. way. Um, but, it's... but they do they do show the multiple pers- pers- perspectives of like people like, yeah. Um, the archive footage is just cool. Di- my family members died there. Right. Um, and like the whole idea is like everyone knew it was this terrible thing, but like you're basically a teenager. But you're like I, I, I'm powerful enough to do this. And again, the documentarians don't, don't. So like the this the part where like we talk about the dark, seedy nature of the park and like mm-hmm. the weird money deals and the people who died is sandwiched in between. Introducing the park, like, whoa, this is, is crazy. And so it gets somber. And then it goes back to fucking, yeah, they died, but the legend of the park will always live on, man. It's so crazy. It's like in the 80s, <laughs> things were just fucking different, man. Yeah. Different Maybe we had better. But yeah, it's fine. I think it's, it's, it's certainly it's interesting. It's interesting, yeah. Especially, as, you know, we, we never lived during that time to like understand it. Um, but, yeah. I feel, but you know, I've also never been in New Jersey. Yeah, so me neither. I have no, no idea. No. But apparently it was a big thing. Um, can we take a break before we uh, keep going here? Let's we got some heavy we got some movies that people feel strongly about. Yeah, in, in one in, in, in different different spectrums. Oh, the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so uh let's take a break. Uh and we'll recap what we talk about and uh I need to get a glass of water. All, All right. right. We'll be back. Charlie Kaufman has returned. He got that Netflix paycheck. He got uh, it. didn't have to go to Kickstarter to make the next movie. I believe that's how Anna Mona Lisa was funded, was through Kickstarter. Maybe. Um, Who knows? I haven't that's a good seen movie. that yet. I haven't it's seen good. it. I watched it like a month or so ago in preparation for this movie, and I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So uh, both of y'all, I assume, are big fans of Charlie Kaufman. Yes. I'm not the biggest fan. What? You see, <laughs> this is where me and Carrie's sadness like mix. Some, like me, Carrie, and Charlie Kaufman, our, our sadness all mixes in like a Venn diagram of sorts <laughs> in a particular spot. It's like, man, this just hits. This just hits. Mm-hmm. This hits different than my... <laughs> Damn, this shit hit, it's different. So this is an adaptation of a novel... Uh, about me and Carrie have both read now. I want to read it actually. Yeah. Uh, by the same name, uh, we are following uh, a young woman in this adaptation, played by Jesse Plemons. No, no, Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons is the fucking guy. Jesse, who- Jesse Buckley. Buckley. Yeah. To Jesse yeah. Buckley. Uh, yeah. Pl- Plemons is the guy who always plays a weirdo in every movie ever. <laughs> uh, Jesse <laughs> Buckley. He's gonna continue doing that. Of uh, Chernobyl. I know her from Chernobyl. I don't know which else he was in. Um, she is going to go visit the family of her boyfriend, who she's not crazy about, but she's going to go with it anyways. She's thinking about ending things. She's thinking about ending things. Uh, and then stuff happens. I don't know. That's it? You're not wrong. And that's why I don't know. It's like, stuff happens. I don't know. Stuff does happen. They get ice cream? They do. That's pretty good. There was a Dairy Queen in the book. Oh, Okay. 
I had Dairy Queen today. Oh, hell wow. yeah. Did you get that $5 meal deal? And I did not actually. I got the Gosh, flame, the I got the flame burger. I got the flame burger. <laughs> Do you remember when that was the premier Ryan bit? It's also, it six, was, it's yeah. also $6. Now. I know. It's $6 now. Oh, it used to be $6 only if you changed it to a mini blizzard. I know, right? So would it be $7 now if I wanted to change it to I a know. It's, it's <laughs> nonsense. You know, let's drop the movie shtick. Let's just talk about this for the rest of the this hour. This is fucking garbage. I know, right? Also, make the cotton candy blizzard permanent, you cowards. Oh my god, my friend was just commenting on that the other it's day. It's so good. We went through Dairy Queen and she was like, do the cotton candy blizzard? I guarantee you they do not. It's a summer thing. It's a uh, summer offering. It's BS. I didn't get to have one this year. Not for any particular reason. I just kept forgetting yeah. that it was gone. <laughs> but I'm going to make it sound like it was something that happened to me. <laughs> I didn't get one. Anyways. Yeah, Charlie Kaufman, he's back. Uh, Ryan, how do you feel about this movie? I absolutely love this yeah, movie. I, you... <laughs> I, I woke up at five in the morning to watch this before I had to go to stupid work, and I was just, I the ride home was silent. The ride there was silent. I was like, oh my god, what the hell was that? I just watched. Because Carrie, you had you had read the book before you watched yeah. it. I read the book afterwards. I took I took one afternoon and I was like, I'm gonna read this book, and I read it. <laughs> and I told I told Greg, if I come out of my room, you better ask me, did I finish the book? And if I say no, do not let me get anything out of the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I read it afterwards just because I wanted to like get a bit more uh, context of some stuff. Because I watched it the first. I've seen it twice already. Same. I watched it the first time. I had a general sense of how I thought it was going to go. I texted you about the ending just because the ending of the movie, <laughs> there's no way that was the book. No, exactly. There was yeah. no way. So I just wanted to make sure of that for sure. Um, and then I watched again knowing – I read some stuff. I watched again. And I was like, okay. I, I dig this With movie a whole With my expert lot. analysis yeah, yeah, in yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. And – yeah, the movie's pretty good. That's I like it a lot. It's 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 cool as hell. Like just 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 the ideas of it. Not not to spoil it, but you know, it's also you know, it's very very good at capturing uh all of Charlie Kaufman's movies do this like the a nightmarish slash dreamish yeah surreal feel and you just nothing feels concrete and everything's just like you feel like you're in a whirlwind the whole time and it's like the movie knows what's going on and you're just thrown in there and it's like please can i can i have a crumb of explanation no we're moving on <laughs> and i loved it i loved it as well it's it's such a it's also just like a celebration of just like film and like media as well mm -hmm. just cuz you know it's it's a very it's a film and like just like any form of artistic in, in expression is just like very important to like the characters of the movie. Mm -hmm. And it just is such a cool thing to see the movie just like celebrate all of that For, in, in, in a movie and like from a filmmaker that you know is like, films, they're pretty cool. I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, making a few of them personally. <laughs> thinking about filming things. I'm thinking of filming things. Um... And yeah, this is this is my favorite movie of the year. Same. It's on, it's on the list, and I love it a lot. Um, I watched this after watching Tenet. because oh. <laughs> I got home. Oh yeah, you saw Tenet, and you're yeah, like, time to watch a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> raced home and greg was like falling asleep and i was like we're watching and thinking about these things <laughs> greg think of it by the way uh i think he i think he liked it he like he didn't love it and i think he thought it was mostly kind of weird but i think he did he think it. it was pretentious oh definitely oh hell he yeah he thinks all the movies i like are pretentious i mean <laughs> he wouldn't be wrong in this case i just still love it <laughs> But yeah, how do you how do you feel about people who don't understand this movie, Carrie? Well, I mean, that's kind of it's built to not be yeah, understood the first time. And I, Carrie, and I can't, and Carrie described it well, especially like all Charlie Kaufman's stuff, mm -hmm. where he's just like puts you in a, in a in a place where everything's uncertain and maybe nothing's maybe some stuff is real. So you can't trust anything, and yeah. it's a lot of information, a lot of stimulus going on. Mm -hmm. uh, the contra that maybe contradicts some of the other stuff, uh, but it all works out, and some of it's also. He's just having a good time, and I could tell. Like I'm yeah. just having, like, especially at the ending. I was like, I'm, I'm just having a good time here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just vibing, I'm vibing with you, guys. What if? And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, I like parts of it, but I was like, eh, okay. 
But the concept, I like it. That's why I want to read the book. I yeah, think uh, the I book think is very cool. Book. It's fun. Ending is very different. I, I, I did like the ending. I do. I like the ending of the movie more, just because it's more like you know visual and cool. But yeah. like the way the the way the book does it is cool. Although it is very jarring, because like it yeah. just kind of reveals the thing immediately, and I'm like, this can't pop. Like I don't, excuse I, I, me. I reread the same pages like a, th a three times. Like, am I missing something here? Is there a transition? But like, there's not. It's just like, this is what this is what the book's about. This is it. <laughs> And that's interesting to me because I watched an interview between Charlie Kaufman and Ian Reed um, that they had over Zoom and they were talking about it. And Ian was like, I still get so bothered with people who like, I don't understand. He's like, I pretty much said what <laughs> it's... It, he literally says what it is in the book. And so that's very interesting to that's me. Funny. How that's something that he is still dealing with and finds funny. I don't know. But yeah, this movie's dope as hell. I love it. <laughs> dope as shit. Uh, big fan of Jesse Buckley. Uh, she's, she's great. great. She's, she's, great. she's fantastic. Um, anyways, uh, Mick G, baby, <laughs> is back. Uh, this is gonna be a hard turn for me emotionally. Yeah. I I want to say I uh might know a little bit of what you're talking about with this movie. I haven't watched it, but if anyone is familiar with uh, uh the whole world is familiar with them now. Uh, Trixie and Katya. Uh couple of rupaul's drag race drag queens and they have this recurring series on the netflix youtube page where they just watch stuff that's on netflix and react to it it's basically just reaction videos but it's done well and they watched this and they loved it they called it fierce ryan oh <laughs> so are you here to contest to that point i first off the movie is the babysitter killer queen um i'll explain what that subtitle title means later it's really smart and complex is it yeah really cool um <laughs> but the flashback three years ago, Was I wrote really on my letterbox. <laughs> Jesus that Christ! God. That yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. the Babysitter, original Babysitter, was the worst film I had ever seen, <laughs> and that was the first time I ever gotten a hate comment on letterbox. <laughs> Someone who said if if the Babysitter was the worst film I've ever seen, that I clearly haven't seen enough movies. Very funny stuff. You know what, dude? It's been three years later. You're right. The Killer Queen movie <laughs> is the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. It takes everything I've hated about the first one and is just like, it amplifies it. It's crazy. This is the worst thing. It's on. I can't believe someone made this. It's... You, Mick G. Mick G. <laughs> it's like, you know those movies that like come out and like, this was made to be a gif on Tumblr. And that's all it is. Ugh. This is just a fun one-liner, one after another. <laughs> it's just for the kids. Except I'm Mick G, and I'm not a child. I'm basically an old, ancient, crusty old asshole who doesn't understand anything. <laughs> and I made this for the kids. Anyways, for the kids. it's a few years later. Uh, as we know from the original Babysitter, it's about uh, a 14-year-old kid who has a babysitter, which is weird, or something like that. <laughs> Um, and his babysitter's part of a cult, and they have to kill him because of his whatever. They never, they're not really clear. I don't remember why they need to kill him, but they need to kill him for the devil so they can get eternal life. It's, um, all very standard. Samantha, uh, Weaving, who you guys might know oh, from Samara Weaving, Samara Weaving yeah. from Right or Not, who's very good now, but she sucks in that movie. Yeah. Um, and the, what they do with her in this movie is really funny. Um, but, and then it doesn't end up working out in that movie, and it's all comedic in a very, it's a very like YouTube early YouTube comedy where it's like, oh, that's so random. Ow, you stabbed me in my tits. That's hilarious. We're having a great time. It's that shit. And then like it's a few years later, and this kid is like, he's like this traumatized like weirdo who's like, I was just trying to be killed by a cult, and everyone's like, you don't know you weren't. Fuck. Fuck you, actually. You're an idiot. And he's like, I'm traumatized. Well, you you, you suck. I hate you. And he's like, all right. But he is, is eventually convinced by like his friend who was a love interest in the first movie to go on like this summer break thing with her friends. And like he he's like, all right, I'll go. And he goes there. And his friend is like, oh, I'm part of that cult now, and we're going to kill you. Uh -oh. And then for some reason, everyone that he killed in 
the original babysitter, including, you know, Bill of Thorne and King Batch, you might know him from Vine, uh, are all back because of the weird devil curse. They can come back every two years to do the curse, whatever. They've also seen every movie that came out since then. They have so many references that they need to tell you. Keen Batch mentions Jordan Peele like three times. And it's like, relax, okay? Jesus, we get it. But they have to kill him, and he meets a girl, and they all kill everyone again. And it's so fucking funny, and it's the <laughs> shittiest thing I've ever felt in my brain. It pains me. It truly pains me. I I saw this trailer and I was like, "There's no way I'm watching that." But you know, yeah, right. In what but, world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. But then, like, I was like, "You know what? Let's do it." And I hated it. It's it's miserable. You know, do you? I want you to guess why this movie is called The Babysitter Killer Queen. Guess, uh, Carrie. <laughs> guess. Uh. It, mm. Uh, because Bella Thorne is the queen and she kills people? No, they play Killer Queen by Queen one time. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's what I love about uh, Samora Weaving's character in this movie. Um, you could tell that she did not want to be a part of it. Right. And they filmed all her scenes later because she's clearly green screened in. It's really funny because she... Oh my god, like... She's not in the movie until the very end. She emerges from water. She's always standing away from everyone else, even though they're interacting in the same scene. So they cut to her and it's like, oh my God. And it's so funny. It's so ridiculous. This movie is also just like, I don't know. It, it sucks. It does. <clears throat> it sexualizes teenagers. And the actors are teenagers and it's really fucking stupid and gross. There's a video game fight scene that's, awful it's the worst thing i i can't even i oh my god i <laughs> this is such a great critique of cinema right here i'm doing it right now i can't i will say know. that there was uh, in the in the reaction video that i watched there was on. one clip of a of a kill that i thought was pretty funny which was it it was the one i think it was bella thorne she got her head stuck in some rocks and her body like falls off and her neck skin is like splintering and like stretching out it looks like bubble gum i don't remember that i i, I oh zoned see out. Yeah. see ryan i'm sorry <laughs> we're uh, not getting a comprehensive critique here. i'm sorry i just hate it i just, it's just the worst thing i've seen ever genuinely and you know what <laughs> if, if you have a problem with that i don't i honestly don't care oh yeah that is bell thorn okay yes, yeah that's that girl. it's 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 truly miserable and well, like, the worst thing is, I was doing some reading on it, and McGee's like, "This is a trilogy." I was like, "Oh, uh -huh. fuck ass." <laughs> I mean, we got, we we got the reviews are in because we got Netflix some keeps coming. Great in. feedback from a one Ryan. <laughs> he said this was miserable, the worst thing I've ever seen, and I was like, "I can beat it." <laughs> I'll take everything he hated and make it worse. See you in another three years. I don't know. That's a long. That's a long time. The baby circus is like forever ago. Yeah, it does. Anyways, we also saw some random stuff, but I guess we should talk. About, I'm gonna recap what we've talked about so far. We talked about Unhinged Woo! with Russell Crowe. Talked about Tenet, same backwards as forwards. Uh, you cannot kill. Oh my god! <laughs> you cannot kill David Arquette. <laughs> Uh, the Devil All the Time, Relic, Class Action Park, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and The Babysitter Killing Queen, Killer Queen. And New Mutants. Oh, and New Mutants. I can't wow. believe we forgot about this. Forgot this. <laughs> Got delayed again to the end of the list. <laughs> Ryan Lance went to Half Price Books, I think, and purchased. No, no, I went sale. to a garage sale. Went to a garage uh, sale. Half price, half price Books wouldn't sell us this crap ass broken <laughs> ass disc. <laughs> I found at a garage sale the number twenty three for a dollar, and I was like, hell yeah, this is worth a dollar, all right. And guess what? Pop that bad boy into my 4K Blu-ray player, and it said, this does not work. That was attempted divine intervention. <laughs> you do not want to watch this. And I was like, oh, come on, Please. man. And then, you know, we looked at the disc, and it was the scratchiest disc I've ever seen. And I was like, what the hell? Because I bought other things from this person, and they were all pristine and clean. What did he do to the number 23 starring Jim Carrey? Directed by Joel Schumacher. What did he do? But anyways, um, I ended up reading it because I was committed to the bit. Yeah. There it goes, $6. <laughs>
<laughs> oh well. So if the DVD was sitting at the garage sale priced at six dollars, would you have bought it? Of that's the question. Not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's way too much. <laughs> Well, I can I can watch it forever for six dollars. I'd rather watch it one time for six dollars. So as Ryan mentioned, the number twenty three, a New Line Cinema production directed by it Joel wasn't Schumacher. And Finafilm. And Finafilm. <laughs> Finafilm. No. A lot of special features we'll never see. Uh, Jim Carrey. This was uh, Logan Lerman. <laughs> Uh, heavily advertised back in the day because it was like scary, but it's Jim Carrey. Whoa, wow. that's crazy. Poor like Jim. And scary. I remember seeing it as a ch- child, and thinking it was really stupid, but I had no memory of it. I remember seeing the trailer when I was a kid and wanting to see it really, really bad, yes, and same. never seeing it. So and then we watching s- this film was a childhood dream coming true. In essence, you just made fun of Carrie as a child. You essentially, yeah, what the hell? You essentially <laughs> walked up to a child and said, "You're an idiot." I'm I'm a grown adult, but you are an idiot. He would have been right. (laughs) (laughs) Carrie, you're stupid. Mm -hmm. So I remember this movie being really fucking dumb. And and we watched it. We talk about how we tried to watch Uh, it on YouTube or something, and it was every fifth second of the movie was cut out or something. It was like five seconds on, five seconds out. What's weird is like this is a movie that like would just be on YouTube. And it's funny because I watched The Mist the other day, and that was just on YouTube. That's a good movie. Completely like movie. fine. But the number 23 is on YouTube, but it's weird. What ending did it have? Did it have the ending where they all die? It had the funny ending. Oh. <laughs> Anyways. Is there an ending where they don't all die? I thought there was. No, I, thought there's there, there's, I thought there was an ending where like they find help, right? I don't think so. He finds but, help, but there was after he shut his fucking door. Oh, right, I think you're yes. thinking of 1408. Maybe I am. 1408 yeah. has multiple endings, and it's always I it's swear. always a mystery which one you're going to get. I swear there's multiple endings. Anyway. Maybe. I have no idea. Have I've you watched any of the, the disc That ending burns. is hilarious. It's such a good It's ending. so good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. When I watched that movie on YouTube, um, it was really great because I was looking at the comments and like, wow, that's the most fucked up ending I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you're... Listen, buddy. You left a hate comment on that. Like, Anyways. If, if you think this is the most fucked up thing, you, you clearly, clearly haven't seen, seen Killer lot. Queen. <laughs> number 23, Jim Carrey goes to a bookstore and finds a book called The Number 23. It's like, oh, wow. That is very eerily similar to his life. Like he's writing about me. That's crazy because I watched, I read a book recently called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. <laughs> and that, that, that really was similar to my life. Uh, but, Weird. Uh, <laughs> where the but except Jim Carrey in this car he plays a fucking weird ass detective. It's like a suave detective. Suave detective who <laughs> saw sex. Having sex. Oh my With, god. Oh my god. What's her fucking name? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, any, his name is, you can call me Fingerling? Detective Fingerling? Oh, yes, something but like that. But what's the name of the lady? Oh, my God. But she's like, what? our cat. No, but this, yeah, she's like, <laughs> this lady just wants to fuck him all the time. I mean. And he's like, cool. Oh, um, and then he starts, Jim Carrey starts seeing the number 23 everywhere. Everywhere. Um, and he starts digging around, and it turns out that it was him. Fabrizia. Fabrizia, yes. <laughs> anyway, it turns out uh, Jim Carrey killed uh, his old wife. What? How did I go? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't Anyways, he killed. He very much killed someone. He went crazy. He was, uh, you know, he got help. He got free, and he fucking runs into his now wife like immediately. Whoa! Oh, immediately, That's and they just cute. start a li- <laughs> they just start a life together, and he's Aww. fine. And then he finds the book, and then he remembers, and his Real. wife's like, "You now, you're fine." And that's the movie. Like Twenty three. What a fucking great movie! <laughs> just all the all of the uh, whenever we switch to the in novel world, and it's Jim Carrey all fucking suave and <laughs> brooding <Raw> detective. <laughs> I loved it so much. The part where uh, he's talking to the one girl and she was like writing on the yes, wall. Yes, the 23 shit. And girl. Then, uh, and then she's like, oh. And he's like, no, just don't, whatever you do, don't kill yourself, okay? And she's like, all right, I won't kill myself. And then he's walking on the street. No, the job well done. Whoop! <laughs> she jumped out the window and died in front of him. <laughs> uh, man, I'm bad at this. Whoops. 
It's not great. Oh fuck! It was so. God funny, bless though. you, Joel Schumacher. But uh, <laughs> man, it's not great. Anyways, it feels like a fake movie. Oh. It doesn't feel real. It was awesome. It doesn't feel real, no. Yeah. And I also remember after we watched that movie, both Donna Joe and I were having all the all the twenty three moments, and we were like, "Wait a minute, our birth year!" And we added it up, and it came out this way. Speaking of Donna Joe, one second. We have a uh, one Donna Joe here. Uh, what do you think of the number twenty three? All right, bye. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That's all accurate. Great fit. <laughs> Anyways, look at that movie. Um, the number 23. Um, so, uh, speaking of, uh, I've been a lot, I think just in general, this quarantine, I've been thinking a lot about the motion pictures of the early to mid 2000s, yeah. the number 23 being one said motion picture. Hey, and yeah. as I was packing, uh, I remembered that one of my favorite movies of the early 2000s was, uh, Cameron Crowe's, uh, Vanilla Sky. 2001 Vanilla Sky, star-studded cast, huge budget, big-time movie, baby. Uh, Tom Cruise, Penelope Cruz, uh, Cameron Diaz, Kurt Russell, Jason Lee, pro uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Knives Out. You want Marshall some cookies? Shannon. Ma- Michael Shannon. Michael, oh, yeah, Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon. He was a bit character. And uh, the, the fucking lineless cop. And uh, what's her name? I'm so bad. How am I? How is this not a bit? Just like I genuinely don't remember names. Suspiria, a mother Suspiria. No, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Thank oh, you. Yeah, of course. guy you guys haven't seen it, so I was like, hey, you want to see this movie? I'm feeling nostalgic about this movie. I wonder if it's still good and if I still like it. Um. And I had wanted to see it for quite a while. I had heard did. names, but I but I had no <laughs> idea what it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I and you know what? Thinking back, I have no idea what that was. Ah, uh, I really like it. I still. have an idea of what it I'm was. I'm probably gonna buy the Blu-ray version of it. Anyways, Vanilla Sky. If, uh, I, I don't know. She might. This movie's been out forever. Do I spoil this movie? Sure, yes. if you want to. <laughs> okay, but I guess if you don't want Vanilla Sky spoiler from 2001. <laughs> Uh, anyways, Vanilla Sky, Cameron Crowe, he directed Jerry Maguire, uh, almost famous, uh, Tom Cruise, obviously Jerry Maguire, big fan, the big, big, good old pals, um, Cameron Crowe came out of, uh, the Keynes Film Festival or whatever the fucking hell where they showed Aubrey Los Ojos, uh, by, I forget his director's name, I used to know it, uh, and he came out, I was like, yo, that was crazy. <laughs> What if we, I did that? What if I was What if I did that? I I did that? <laughs> and then, uh, oh, no, it was Tom Cruise, not Cameron Crowe. Tom Cruise then showed it to Cameron Crowe, and he was like, you got to see this shit. This is crazy. <laughs> and they're like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> He's like, there's no motion blur. I love it. <laughs> um, and so they fucking rent out Times Square, and they fucking shoot this movie. Um, so Tom Cruise is very handsome, very rich, very cool. Ageless. Ageless. Never will die. Uh, and that's the character he plays in this motion picture. Uh, <laughs> or he is like top of the world owner of a magazine company, never going to go out of business, living <laughs> it up. Everyone loves print media. Everyone loves print media. <laughs> um, his dad died and he's got this empire to him. Everything's going great. Cameron Crowe. I mean, not Cameron Crowe. Cameron Diaz. He's fucking Cameron Diaz. And it's fine. She's very chill about it. It's great. Very normal about it, really. Very normal. Very normal hands. Fucking his best friend. My name is Earl. She fucking uh, meets Penel- uh, Penelope Cruz. And he's like, whoa. She's like Hold Spanish. That's crazy. Um... <laughs> They have a fucking nice fling, uh, and then Cameron Diaz decides she's that's a very not cool thing, not very chill, not chill at all, not chill at all. And decides not to kill the them, <laughs> and decides to kill them by driving her car across, like out of a bridge into fucking uh, not Times Square. What the fuck is it called? Uh, Central, Central Park. Park. Central Park. Um, and then uh, he his face gets messed up because of that, and uh, life's not great. And then. Uh, stuff, weird stuff happens, and then some nice stuff happens, and then some, some weird stuff, and weird stuff, stuff quote, weird. unquote, quote, as Tom Cruise is fucking Cameron Diaz, uh, and is losing his fucking mind, what the fuck is happening as he's, like, fucking mid-stroke, <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> this movie was so awesome. yeah, this movie's like a it's like a it's a sci-fi drama thing, but it doesn't yeah. reveal the sci-fi things until it finally decides to explain that Tom Cruise cryogenically froze himself after he killed himself because he thought he just couldn't live life. He was so sad. I would just uh, hey, hey, look, I'm not making fun of wait, look, whatever. That sounds rough. Whatever. He kills himself, uh, gets himself uh, cryogenically frozen, but he signed up to have like a sort of lucid dream where he is frozen, but he's still dreaming in this thing that he made up, which is that he, after the really bad day, the fucking, when he went to a club with his mask on and just started dancing around. <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I loved it when he ended on the back of his head, too. He's just walking through the crowd. It's like, what the hell is it's that? It's very good. A lot of visual choices. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, he decide, he makes this like very like in retrospect once you watch it like man that was a little on the nose a little too sweet where Penelope Cruz comes back yeah. and they spend a happy life together um, I don't even care that your face is mildly messed up yeah. which also that was thing that bothered me is like his face isn't that I mean, man, to be fair, it was Tom Cruise that fucked it up. He was being an asshole. Yeah, yeah. he was. And he started as Tom Cruise he already yeah, had a pretty upset true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. some problems but yeah mm-hmm mm. Uh, and so, yes, th- so that happens because in this fucking dream, he's with Kurt Russell the whole movie talking about her. He's like, I did not kill her, I my God. I did not. <laughs> and Kurt Russell's like doing his best dad fucking, oh, my guess his best Gregory Peck in To Kill a Mockingbird, to be specific. <laughs> um, and it turns out that. Uh, Some might say. Yeah, he, it, the dream went bad and his conscience came in and fucking changed the Penelope Cruz's character, Sophia, into Cameron Diaz's character character and then he killed her because he's going crazy and then uh we find out that it was all a dream and then he's on the rooftop and the fucking music's playing and it's really pretty and it's really nice and he decides it's fuck nice it vanilla sky that's nice vanilla sky uh paul mccartney's vanilla sky he decides he's gonna jump off the fucking roof because he's got afraid of heights and he's like oh if i want to ever get out of here i will con- yeah i will conquer my fear of heights and go and wake up into the whatever weird future world we're living in um with a uh, fucking the guy from Paddington Bear is like wow this is crazy am i right um the yeah, guy's from Paddington Bear right which guy the fucking tech support I appreciate sure him. Say Penny. yes. I, <laughs> sure. I mean, he looks like he'd be Probably. in pen. Anyways, that's Vanilla Sky. Carrie, what'd you think of it? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I just, it was so fucking funny. <laughs> And just, I loved watching a Tom Cruise movie where it's basically just him yes. turning in a Nicolas Cage level yep. crazy performance where he's just going for he's, it. Because yep. usually, like, he's a good actor, and I've never been super compelled by him in anything. But like, <laughs> it's just, it's just funny to see him going for it in a non-action yes. way, just like delivering some fucking thespian yep. stuff. It's good to know that he's always been like this. <laughs> yeah, he's always been a bit. Yeah, like for me, know. this movie is like the prime, this is like prime condensed Tom Cruise. This Crew. is hubris. This, this is, is hubris This is Tom itself. Cruise. Um, yeah, with his, his own personal like childhood photos. Yes, his own childhood photos <laughs> so at play. Awesome. Very much a movie that they he very much uh, put his all into. Um, and hey, I say this, but like people, like it did very well financially, but just people didn't like it. It did very well. Um, Cameron Crowe still likes it. Hey, I love it. It's, I like it. I love it a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a piece. They don't make movies like that anymore. <laughs> sure. I mean, don't. maybe Christopher Nolan might. I don't know. Ooh. But uh, Sky Two. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Chocolate Sky. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Anyways, that's all the shit we've seen. Um. There's stuff happening. Yeah. Kind of. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what is a uh, Hubie Halloween? Hubby. Hubby Halloween. That's the. Uh, what about Adam Sandler? That's the new Adam oh, Sandler. Fuck, I know who this is. God damn it. <laughs> I just. I put this on here because it made me think of that that, that promise yes, that he made. Yes, that's what I. Yes. <laughs> it, where if he didn't. The get day of reckoning will come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was his Papa John's moment. How if he didn't get nominated for his Uncut Gems performance, he was going to make the worst movie ever. And I think that might be this. Great. Oh, great. We can only hope. Fantastic. Mm. So yeah, new Adam Sandler Netflix film. Of course. Love it. 
Uh, the war with grandpa. Uh, have you heard of uh, Christopher Walken? Yeah, and, never. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what's his name? Fucking taxi driver man, Robert De Niro. Okay. They're okay. in an old old guy slapstick comedy. Oh, <laughs> I would have thought they'd already done this by now. I are mean, they are they in a nursing I, home and like hate each other with like their wheelchairs? And, like, no, seven psychopaths. I think it's, that movie's awesome. Is it? Okay. I think it's. I don't remember. I watched the trailer forever ago. I just wanted to shout it out because I still love Christopher Walken, and I'll watch him in anything. But I think it's something to do with their grandkids are dunking on them, and the grandpas are like, "You know what? I I may be a grandpa, but you can't get my go." Yeah, old school versus new cool. Which is the new cool grandpa? <clears throat> or are they both old school and they're going against something else together? Uh, uh, Uma Thurman is in this film. Oh, so she's probably the cool grandpa. <laughs> she's the coolest grandpa of all time. But yeah, it just it just looked like a, a funny, funny old guy movie. <laughs> I know how big of fans we all are of that. Okay. When, where is this? Is this like a video on demand daily or is this a streaming service? I saw yeah. it as a trailer b- b- before, before on a YouTube video. So, so who maybe, knows? <laughs> who, who knows where cool. it will be? I don't know any of these movies on this list, really. <laughs> Honest Thief. What is Honest I've Thief? I've seen the trailer for this. Uh, yeah, we I got can't... the trailer for this. I got it in front of Unhinged and the David Arquette documentary, I think. It's a, a Liam Neeson film. And uh, he was a yes, he was a he was a yes, thief. Yes, yes. He was a thief, and uh, he's All like, "What if bastards. I turn myself in, and then you reduce my sentence?" And they're like, "Why?" And he's like, I, "I have a girlfriend now, and I want to spend all my life with her as much as I can." And then these two cops are like, all right, yeah, we'll help you out. We'll take all that money. And then they're like, oh, my God, the money's actually here. And then they're like, what if we stole this money and pinned it on Liam Neeson? Who would be the wiser? And then they killed one of their superior fbi guys and are just it's, trying to escape with liam neeson's money and he's like you it's and so it's i got the sense that they killed his girlfriend he was like all right well here i go killing no he's got, well i think they injure his girlfriend because okay. she's in the hospital okay. but they kill like their boss okay something. i know they killed someone and he was driving like uh, listen here you you don't yeah there's a, a classic liam neeson on the phone with someone he's mad at <laughs> listen liam... here I, the thing is i'm you hear him turn the page. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> I am big. I am big mad. <laughs> so yeah, it's just it just looked like it was a moment of like, wow, I'm seeing a trailer for a mediocre movie in a theater again. This it's, is so... <laughs> it's back to normal. <laughs> yeah. I also got a trailer. I don't remember what it's called. Oh, it's called uh uh uh. Greenland. There's a new movie coming out with uh, Gerard Butler, ah. <laughs> where there's a meteorite that's about to hit Florida, and he has to get all of his family to Greenland. Oh, <laughs> of I remember this too. Is that? Oh yeah, that's also. Is that up in the air now as well? I, I guess. Have no idea when that's going. Out, Fucking but... knowing ass shit. <laughs> Fucking what if your name, but not. Oh. But if Gerard Butler <laughs> and Florida. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Wolf of Snow. Again, Hall. these are my these could all be fake ass movies you guys put on this <laughs> list. Yeah, you have to find out which one is the fake one, George. <laughs> What's this? No, this one is the new horror movie. It's a werewolf horror movie by Jim Cummings, not that Jim Cummings, other Jim Cummings, the oh, guy who made God. the guy who made Thunder Road from a couple years ago, a movie that I am a big big fan of, and this is his follow up film. It's a, he plays like essentially the same character. It looks like a, a drunk cop, and uh, it's like a small mountain town dealing with a werewolf. And he's like, "There's no werewolf," but I think there's, there's a, a I think there's a werewolf. Mm. So I think it just looks fun, and okay. it's coming out soon. Fun. Okay, possessor. Possessor. Uh, body horror. I don't know what this is about. Me either. Neither do I. I. It looks cool Weird. as shit. So that's all I it care about. Awesome. A lot of folks saw it illegally before idiots all i know is apparently we're watching it soon i think yeah. apparently david cronenberg has a Fuck son yeah. apparently and apparently his son is just as weird <laughs> Wait, is this guessing? actually david is this a bit or is that actually david no yeah. it's, it's brandon oh cronenberg. classic <laughs> keith cronenberg <laughs> <laughs> dennis yeah, cronenberg it's got, it's got, it's got, it's 
got the lady who plays Mandy in it. It's got Jennifer Jason Lee in it. I'm pretty sure it reprising her role as sci-fi lady who speaks flatly. It's the same role she played in Annihilation. (laughs) Oh. Cool, cool. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Finally, the final movie we'll watch uh, this year in a movie theater. Uh, On the Rocks, again. On the Rocks. Uh, This is an Apple TV Plus movie. (sighs) But it's Sophia Coppola directed, Bill Murray, oh. uh, Rashida Jones. Oh. Um, it's about her dealing with like her dad and they're doing something. I don't know. Uh, I saw the trailer and it looked kind of bad and or I've boring. heard it's just like, look, all right, that's fine. Sophia... But like, I love Sophia Coppola. So yeah. I'll, I'll I think she's it. fine. I hate how it's an Apple TV Plus that is movie. Weird. That's a that's... weird movie. The Bling Ring was okay. I haven't seen that. Marie Antoinette was I... okay. I liked Marie Antoinette a lot, and I didn't like The Beguiled as much as I wanted to. That, that was, was a real right. bummer. Yeah. I think so? I just I just love Virgin Suicides and... I haven't um, seen that. Oh, my God. Lost in Translation so yes. much. Oh, yeah. This is good They're movie. both so good, and I just want... I just want more, and she's so fucking cool. I just want, I just love more stuff from her. Speaking of things that I, you would tell, if you told me this was a joke, I would have uh, believed you. Why are they making another Borat subsequent movie film? They're making another one. Apparently, this has been in the works. Um, it started in February because uh, there was a Mike Pence. Um, <laughs> Thing where it was interrupted by someone wearing a Trump costume, and that was Sasa Baron Cohen. That's amazing. Oh. People didn't know That's that at first. They just knew like there was a weird thing that happened at a Mike Pence rally, but like I don't know much else about it. And then over this past summer, people have been like, <laughs> "I think I fucking saw Borat over there." <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, right. Woman. And it's like I think no, I saw Borat. <laughs> Definitely, but yeah, uh, he made um, another Borat movie, and I, I was like, why and like, what is this? I'm fascinated. So I, did, but... I did some research, and like, the the context of the movie is like, he's you know, Borat's Borat, yes, and he decides to go back to America because of something in fake Kazakhstan and Mike Pence. He has to basically deliver his daughter as a bride to Mike Pence. That's the bit, which is pretty fucking funny (laughs) Um, because fuck Mike Pence. Um, But because his movie was popular, people know who Borat is. So he, him as Borat disguised as another character for the most part and like does America stuff. And coronavirus is a big topic of it and it's really big on politics. If either of you guys have seen clips from his Sasha Baron Cohen's show, Who Was America? He's yeah, I saw parts of it. I he's, I dropped he's off it. He's now very big on like I want to ruin a horrible politicians' career. Yes, nice. I remember that. The remember. big the big one is there was a senator from Alabama or something, yes. and he had a bit with him where he got him to say so much yep. racist stuff, including <laughs> just screaming the N word. Oh, no. When he was they were like doing real. like a self defense thing or some yeah. shit. Yeah, the bit was like, what? What is the thing? That, there is one word in America where you can you say and like everyone will get your attention. So if you're being countered by terrorists, yell the word as loud as possible. He didn't say the word. And he's like, all right, and then like they do a training drill, and he the guy is yelling yeah, the yeah, words yeah, like, yeah. like, what are you doing? No, I meant Nudie. Not that, not that word. Do not say that. Yes. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. But like, it was other things with this guy where he yeah. used a selfie stick to take pictures of women in burkas to see if they were yep. packing heat, yep, 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 as yep, in yep, yep. a wiener, right. as in terrorists. And he was like, that's a good idea. And it's like, oh, what the hell? But yeah, that guy resigned like immediately after that episode came out. So amazing. I'm interested in seeing what he did to Paul. Like 2017? Yeah, because I know Mike Pence is in it, and I know Rudy Giudi- Giuliani is in it. Oh, great. Mm. Two people I don't like, personally. Yeah. I think Rudy Giuliani also tested positive, by the way. Hell yeah. I, think so. <laughs> I, mean, no, I mean, that's a tragedy. Thoughts and prayers. And thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers, as always. I Speaking just... of Mike Pence, there's that rumor going around, and I saw this on some, I forgot, was it The Hill? Or I don't know if I can report it, but everything's going so miles, thousand yeah. miles per hour right now. <laughs> that Trump would prefer Melania to take the presidency. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Instead of Mike Pence. <laughs> That's embarrassing. This is hilarious. I want Baron Trump to take over over my pencil. Oh, man. oh damn it! Come on. Uh, but anyway. I just saw the first Borat for the first time like a few days ago. 
Because I'd, never, I'd never seen it. It was very it. much a product of the, yeah. the Bush. I enjoyed era. it. I feel, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that'd be interesting to watch nowadays. Cause Honestly, yeah. It just feels like fucking ancient history. It yeah. does, right? Yeah. Well, I never had the. I never watched it. All I knew was all the fucking idiots who were just like my wife all the time. And I was and like, why like, did that? After we watched it, I was like, to Greg, I, I was get, like, why did that catch on? He said it like two times in the movie. I get the feeling that there's a <laughs> lot. Of, now you think it's hilarious. My so, wife. But, uh, yeah. I get the, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna bring that back. That's gonna be my new bit. <laughs> Man, this podcast was very nice. <laughs> Not. See, you do that, and I and I do. A bunch of. Uh, I for this some reason have more. Very nice, not. I for some reason have a lot more Bruno jokes in my. Uh, I, I watched Bruno Welcome, earlier yeah. this year as well, and I think I like Bruno more than. I like Bruno. Rap. I like I Bruno think, a I lot. Think Bruno is, has has more. You know, Borat has some problems still. It, yes. And Bruno definitely has problems, oh, but at yeah. least like they tackle like the issues. Yo, that, man, fuck, man, welcome yeah. to the jungle. That's what I, <laughs> yeah. I say that regularly for some reason. Uh, anyways, I also say yo, man, fuck, yo, man, God. fuck, man, <laughs> welcome man. to the jungle. Yeah. Um, anyways, I feel like speaking of the Borat and specifically like why do people latch on to the my wife bit? Like that is it is about the Bush administration and the times we were living in, but I feel like. A lot of the critical stuff that was around that era, mm-hmm. like just American Idiot, yeah. like it went through people's heads that they're talking about, like, hey, the war in Iraq is pretty fucked. Like, this makes no goddamn sense. Yeah. And this guy is a fucking idiot. But well, we I were. I feel like people joked about that, like, haha, but like, I don't but, think people got it. Right, yeah. It wasn't until, like, wait, Borough was about how Americans are bad. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I see. Yeah. It is uh, interesting. That's why I'd like to rewatch that again, probably before uh, the original movie, to just see, you know, what's going on. But yeah, I'm weirdly interested in this. If you told me a year ago, Brian, there's going to be a new Borough movie, like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyways. Bring it on. Also, they're making another craft. Here we go. Yeah, I haven't seen the first craft. Is this like... I just watched it. I've been watching a lot of things this year, believe it or not. I watched it for the first time a few months ago. Okay, can some... Okay, does anybody... We're speaking about history and, like, all these, like, things that... Why? I'm getting ready to Google whatever. Why why was the mid to late 90s, like, so obsessed with witches? Right, like there was definitely a th- cool. I mean, they are cool, <laughs> but what was it? Gee, this guy, come on. <laughs> like the fucking Scooby Doo, like Buffy the Vampire, the crab. Pocus, 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 pocus. Did think, you try and get I that palette? Like... Is that out yet? Is that was that a thing? Oh yeah, I heard about that. I probably won't buy it, but okay. I'll, I'll, I haven't seen it. I'll look it up right now. Is there anybody seen people did that Sailor Moon palette that everybody was horny for? Oh, That's why. Oh, that makes. I remember people being kind of upset. They were like, I just bought this shit. God damn it. I'll let you know if I'm okay. interested once I look at it. Oh, no, we didn't come up with a definitive answer about the witch craze of the I 90s. Oh, well. Um. Anyway. Oh, oh Lunar Beauty. They do yeah. They do stuff. Okay. Hold on. Anyway, is the Craft this. Legacy, is this like a... Is this like a... This is a follow-up. Yeah. But is this like a nonsense, garbage, who cares movie? I don't or? know. I haven't seen the first one. I haven't seen the trailer. This like red... I mean, like again, back when like just going straight to VOD could have been used as a pejorative, but now... It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't. I don't like this palette. Oh, okay. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Harry said it. <laughs> don't buy. Harry did it. Um, yeah, I mentioned this. Speaking of witches. Oh, wait, maybe I was looking at the Raw one. Dolls. I didn't know this was coming. Wait, this is coming out soon? Oh, yeah, right. this this month on HBO Max original. Well, shit. Yeah, the witches. I've seen, I haven't oh. seen the trailer, but I just saw like, Robert man. Robert Zemeckis and- is back. Oh, Wait, what? I think I found the correct palette. I also don't like this one. <laughs> well, there, you go. there it is. I will not be buying that. Sorry. There it is, baby. Color uh, pop. Whoa. Anyways, uh, Raw Dolls, the witches, Anne Hathaway. I've only seen Anne Hathaway's photos in this, and she's like, she looks really attractive. But that's all mm-hmm. I know. I haven't w- seen the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan showed me the trailer when I first got here. Does it, it look it good? Look, it looks alright. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks fun. Like an I haven't H- seen Max I'm, original. It's a, I have, and it's I also quick. I haven't seen the around. original, which is I have it, but I haven't watched it yet. Got oh, is that is that what that? That's, a, that's also an adaptation of that book. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen that like five dollar DVD when I go yeah. to Target or somewhere. Yeah. And I always see the screen cap of like the weird face that ends up in that movie. I don't know why. I haven't. I haven't watched it. I don't know why that face happens, but it's all like wordy and interesting. Scary. Interesting. Well, uh, that's all we got to look forward <laughs> to, folks. 
I'm excited for Possessor, and I'm probably going to rewatch Borat at some point now because there's another Borat coming out. Very, Very nice. nice. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Kazakhstan. Man, how do we how do we end the podcast now? Anyways. Uh, Wait, we have so many more movies to talk about. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> Greenland, am I right? <laughs> um. Anyways, that's a podcast. We'll probably see another two or three more trailers for Black Widow before the end of the oh, year. Oh, just killing me now! <laughs> just like the whole movie, movie you could stitch it with trailers. That movie was officially delayed till yeah, next year. Of course. So is the just Bond movie. Can't yeah. There's nothing happened. There's nothing. Everything. What's weird is like they moved, like <laughs> they moved the Eternals movie to next November. But the Shane Chi movie is staying where it is oh. next year, like in like June or something. So it's like, what what are they doing here? I just I I, I, I love it because it's like clearly nobody knows what the fuck they're doing, and then <laughs> yeah. people make a call. It's like, especially like in marketing and all these like big like we have to make it. We are in places where we have to make a decision, right? Yes. And so we make that decision, and then like oftentimes it's fine, but. Sometimes. But sometimes, just to see it regularly be like, oh, fuck, shit, that didn't work out. Fuck, I don't know, November? Oh, god damn it, I don't know, June. If anything, like, the Fast and Furious people came out coming out as the smartest big brain motherfuckers. Weird. Like, ne- a year. Just a year. Yeah. Just, just fuck it. And then, it was a good call. That's what uh, Spiral did, too. No, oh, okay, yeah. I was so, devastated. Yeah, that was as cool. long as the Batman's not delayed anymore, I'm fine. I mean, as they're not filming they, it right now. I don't think they are. They are filming it. They're today. back. They're all back, right. Baby. As long as they took like a two week break just to make sure our past all right, Robert. Destroyed yeah, back as long as Death on the Nile comes out, Kenneth Branagh. Oh, masterpiece. Is, has that been? Has that been put? In it was supposed to come out in this October, year, right. and I think it got delayed to November. And I'm not holding out yeah, much no hope. Way. I think, or actually, I think it got delayed till December. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, that's a podcast. Ryan, if people want to see your opinions on Borat, probably. Oh, hell yeah. Go to letterbox.com slash film piece, and I will make a review based on any movie you want me to. Gothica. Ever. I haven't seen it. Me either. Phantom of the Opera. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Carrie, where can people find you? You can find me on Letterbox just by searching my first name, Carrie, K A R R I E. I'm going to kick off. I'm doing another round of trying to watch a bunch of new horror movies. Oh, in yeah. October. There is some stuff on Shudder coming out soon that I've heard. I have cool. a couple Shudder movies on there. And, I was uh, thinking of making a similar list to what you made, but then, guess, get this, I didn't. Nice. Whoa. We're going to see if I do better this year. Last year, I watched like 10 of them and then watched watched a few of them for the rest of the year like possession was on my list last year and i didn't end up watching it until earlier this year but we'll see Mm-mm-mm. we'll see you can find me at j cruz alvarez 26 uh i think i'm both things on i haven't been on letterbox in a minute anyways uh that's a podcast we'll probably see you in another two months who knows what the state of the world will be or if our president will be alive uh <laughs> who could say let's find out Thoughts together and- Prayers. Yes. <laughs> uh, see you then. Bye bye.